Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for another Procreate tutorial. This week's tutorial is highly anticipated and one that you guys have requested a lot. I'm going to be giving you an introduction to the animation assist tool in Procreate and showing you how to make very simple GIFs. I'm definitely going to do more than one GIF tutorial because this is something that you can make really simple or really complicated, but let's start simple. So the first thing that I've done here is I've duplicated this illustration I did for um, COVID safety reminders because this week I'm going to be showing you how to make GIFs using illustrations you've already created so that we can just focus on how the animation assist tool works rather than also illustrating as we go. So what I've done, as I said, is I duplicated that illustration and now I'm fine tuning each piece of the illustration to create a single PNG file with them. To do that, I'm going to go into each aspect of the illustration, resize it or tweak it where necessary, and then flatten it into one piece. And then I'm going to save it to my files on my iPad. Now that I'm happy with each aspect of the illustration, I'm gonna turn back on the, all of those layers and I'm gonna show you a little shortcut for saving layers of separate files. So we're going into the share and we're going down to the layers export section and we're selecting export layers as PNG files. And then we're clicking save to files and I'm just gonna save it into my Procreate folder on my iPad. What this is gonna do is it's actually gonna save each of these layers as a separate PNG file inside in my files, as opposed to one layered image. Now I can just delete that canvas that I've been working on. And I'm gonna create a new blank canvas. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the background and then go into my canvas settings and turn on the canvas guides and the animation assist tool. Then we're going to use the add file setting to go into our files. And as you can see, there are my separate little PNG files. And I'm gonna start with this stay calm one. I'm gonna add this to my canvas as it is. I'm just gonna turn it around a little bit, I think, to make it fit a little bit better. The first GIF effect that I'm gonna show you how to do is a simple over and back wiggle style GIF. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that layer and then I'm going to rotate it just slightly to the right. You can see my first layer behind it. That's kind of called the onion skin layer effect. I'm gonna duplicate it again and do the same thing. And then I'm going to duplicate that first rotation and put it on top so that it will look like the heart's going over and back when I play it, as opposed to just falling to the right and then starting again. I'm gonna adjust my speed down to five because that's the speed that I find works best for this kind of GIF. And then I'm gonna tap on play to see how it works. So if it wasn't looking right here, I could either add more layers, take some layers out. I can put the speed up, maybe it's not going fast enough, or I can turn it down if it's going too fast. This is a really simple GIF to create using illustrations you've already made. You're just bringing the illustration to life, making it move over and back. Now we're ready to save it as a GIF, so we're going to go into our share menu and we're going to click on save as animated GIF. Again, this will show us a preview of what it's going to look like and if we're happy we can click on export. And I'm going to save it directly to my camera roll. And we're going to come back to this later and I'm going to show you how to import it to Giphy. So that's our first GIF created. For my second GIF, I'm going to repeat exactly the same steps as I did before using the stay out of my personal space bubble illustration. And I'm just, again, I'm gonna make it look like it's wiggling over and back just so that you can see the steps again. Now one thing I am going to do slightly different with this particular GIF is I'm going to crop the canvas now that I'm happy with its movements. 
The reason I'm doing this is Giphy uses empty space to recognize the GIF. And if there's too much empty space left on your canvas when you add it to Giphy, it's going to reduce the file size and you're not going to be able to make this GIF big on your stories without it losing quality. So I've cropped the canvas right down to as close as I can with the movements here and I'm saving it as that, as that little rectangle shape so that once I import it to Giphy, it won't lose any quality because of the amount of empty space on the canvas. And when I use it on my Instagram stories, it will still look nice, good quality, not pixely. For this next GIF, I'm gonna show you how to achieve a rotation effect, which means that the GIF is gonna look like it's going around in a circle. This don't touch your face illustration is perfect for that because it's already a circle, so it's easy to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just, I've resized it slightly here so it's nice and small, and I'm gonna start duplicating it and turning it ever so slightly. I'm using the T on touch here as my guide. So every time I rotate it over, I'm making sure that the T goes past the T in the previous layer. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I've rotated it the whole way around to almost where it started. Now that I've gone the whole way around with my rotations, I'm ready to test if it's working. Now for a GIF like this, we're gonna need a slightly higher speed. I've set mine to 10 or 11, I find is the best. And then I'm just gonna tap on play to see if it looks good. And it looks nice and smooth. Again, I could play with my speed settings here, so I could put up the speed to see if it looks better going slightly faster or slightly slower. But for me, in around 10 or 11 is the best because it's going to look like a smooth rotation, but I can still read the text easily. Once again, there is a little bit of empty space on the top and sides of this canvas. And so to make sure it retains quality when I upload it to Giphy, I'm just gonna crop it ever so slightly to get rid of as much empty space as I possibly can. And then we're done and we're ready once again to save it as an animated GIF to our camera roll so we can move on to our next GIF. For my little bottle of hand sanitizer, my wash your hands GIF, I'm going to go with a heartbeat effect, which is gonna make the illustration look like it's getting bigger and smaller. I'm gonna start by making the illustration fill the canvas as big as I can and then I'm going to start resizing it down making sure I'm using my canvas guides to center it each time I'm going to make it I think I resize it two or three times here smaller and then I'm going to duplicate the layers again so I get that kind of ping pong effect where it goes up and down you could just avoid that step altogether and instead of using the loop gif setting once you've done your resizing and you're happy you could use a ping pong and then just save it as an animated GIF. I just prefer to do it this way because it gives me slightly more control over the layers and therefore gives me a better flow once I animate it. Again, once I'm happy with my animation, I need to get rid of as much empty space as I can on that canvas. So I'm cropping it in right down to that narrow rectangle. I'm taking it as close to the lettering and the side of the bottle as I possibly can for each layer, just to make sure, as I said, that I get rid of as much empty space. And this is gonna make sure when we upload it to Giphy that it retains its quality. The reason I'm repeating this over and over again is this is something that I didn't actually understand when I first started uploading GIFs to Giphy, and it really bothered me that they wouldn't retain their quality when I uploaded them. So it was through a lot of trial and error that I figured out how important that this step is. And um, I had to redo many of my GIFs to make sure that they had removed the empty space to make the quality better. Okay, onto our last GIF, which is the wear a mask illustration. 
Um, I'm just going to repeat the first style that I showed you, which is that wiggle over and back effect, because I think, again, for this illustration, it's the best one to go with. Now that I've created all of my GIFs and I've saved them to my camera roll, I'm ready to add them to my Giphy account. So I'm going to Giphy.com. If you want to make your GIFs usable on Instagram stories, then you're going to have to set up a Giphy.com account and create your own profile and set it so that you can add your GIFs and that they become visible in the Giphy search engine. This is more complicated than it sounds. So it's much easier just to go to the Giphy frequently asked questions section and follow the instructions on how to set up your profile so that your GIFs will become searchable in their search engine. So what I've done here is I've used the upload tool at the top of my Giphy page to select all of the GIFs that I created from my camera roll. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding my tags and my source URL. The source URL is for crediting the source. So for me, it's my Instagram page because that's where my illustrations came from. But if you've created a GIF using perhaps someone else's images or from a video or a TV show, then you need to put in your source here where you collected your original images from so that if someone clicks through on the Giphy page, they can find the original source of the images. This is really important to give credit for um, your images. Uh, then I've just added in my tags so that when people search these particular words on the Instagram stories gift section, they will actually find these gifts. And it's important here as well to use your own tags like mine is Laura Jane so that it's easy for your followers to find your gifts. Then once they're uploaded, I can go to my channel on Giphy, which is the profile. And there are all the gifts that I just created. It takes from my experience about 24 hours or more for gifts to become visible in the search engine on Instagram stories. So these particular gifts probably won't be visible on Instagram stories for me until the next day. But I can see that they're properly uploaded. I can see all of the tags. And when I click on this particular tag, I can see all of my other gifts under that tag. Um, and this is also a good way to check if they're visible in the search engine because right now my stay safe and sanitized gifts are not ready yet when I click on my Laura Jane tag. And that's it. That's how you create really simple GIFs using illustrations that you've already made. Uh, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and I can't wait to see the GIFs that you're going to create. So make sure you let me know if you try this out or tag me in your stories when they become visible in the GIF search engine and get as creative as you want to. And I will see you again next week for another Procreate tutorial.